I bet you've heard of lead poisoning. Lead poisoning is something that most people are aware of today, and it's something we've worked really, really hard to prevent. It would be almost impossible to have a conversation about the history of human civilization without mentioning the role that lead has played for better and for worse. So let's talk about some history with lead. Lead was actually one of the first known toxic exposures that humans figured out and described. The ancient Greeks first described symptoms of lead poisoning more than 2,000 years ago, but it was the Romans who took lead poisoning to new levels. The aqueducts of ancient Rome are considered a major technological advance, allowing potable water to be delivered across vast areas of land. It is likely that this technology helped advance their large empire. These aqueducts used lead very extensively for the pipes. In fact, it was used so commonly for the pipes that the Latin name for lead, plumbum, is where our word plumbing comes from. Unfortunately, lead pipes have been used up until relatively recent times and still cause problems. The ancient Roman engineer Vitruvius famously tried to warn against the use of lead for plumbing, but nevertheless, this was the material that these pipes were made of, and lead did end up in the water supply. It's unclear how much lead was in the drinking water, and whether it really would have caused widespread problems. But don't worry, the Romans loved to use lead in other ways as well. Romans, and plenty of people before and after them actually, used lead in things like cosmetics, skin care, even used it in forms of medicines, um, and to make things like more durable paints, ceramics, and most curiously, in the case of the Romans, consumed it in their foods. I don't mean that it just ended up in their foods, or contaminated their foods. I mean that they were often dumping lead into their food. Because lead is easy to manipulate at low temperatures and has low corrosion, it was used in early metal products including cookware vessels like pots and pans and utensils. A common product that Romans used was must, which is basically a grape syrup that was made from boiling down the remnants of grapes from the winemaking process or just cooking down grape juice. This product was used to sweeten and maybe even preserve things like wine primarily, but it was also added to other foods and even fed to animals that were being raised for meat. At the time, the only other sweetener that was available was honey, so this was an important product. While lead vessels were not routinely or most commonly used for cooking everything else, it does seem like they were preferred for making this product, which was known as sapa or defrutum, and for good reason. The lead helped sweeten the final product more than the concentrated grape syrup on its own. Who knew lead is a natural sweetener? Well, the Romans sure did, and they cooked their product this way intentionally in order to get the sweet lead acetate into it. And lead is also low calorie, but I would strongly recommend against it, since no amount of lead is safe for human consumption. The History Channel did a cool experiment where they made this product the same way that the ancient Romans would have. They ended up with a final product that had almost 3,000 times the lead concentration that is allowed in drinking water today. These kind of numbers definitely would have been able to cause poisoning, especially over prolonged periods of time and continuous, repeated consumption. The thing about lead is that you don't have to get poisoned all at once. Lead is stored in the body and can build up over time from lower level exposures too, leading to toxic accumulations and poisoning later. So I can't say whether lead poisoning caused or even contributed to the decline of Rome, and this is hotly contested by experts in the field. But there's ample evidence that Romans were lead poisoned. Even the condition gout, which was prevalent in Rome, especially in the wealthier classes, can be caused by lead in addition to rich foods and drinks. The form of gout that is caused by lead is called Saturnine gout, named for Saturn, who is the god of wine and grapes. The lead acetate that was used as a sweetener has been referred to as salt of Saturn. Not only do we have evidence for toxic consumption, but remains have shown evidence of lead poisoning and testing has detected plenty of lead. So was it the plumbing or the food sweetener? Again, nobody can really say with certainty, but I can say that one is definitely worse than the other. When it comes to lead, there is metallic lead, and then there are two main forms of lead compounds, organic and inorganic. While the word organic nowadays seems more synonymous with certain kinds of food and food production, when it comes to metals, it just means that the form of lead has carbon groups attached to it, whereas inorganic lead does not. Inorganic lead is what is most commonly found in the environment even today and includes lead in water and lead from lead pipes. 
organic lead is rare today, and for good reason. It is far more toxic. It has more toxic effects on the central nervous system and absorbs more readily throughout the body. It can even be absorbed through intact skin. Not to say that inorganic lead is safe by any means. Again, there's no amount of lead that is safe for humans. It just means that organic lead is far worse. The lead acetate used as a sweetener by the Romans is a form of organic lead, so it is more toxic. And we know that it was present at pretty high concentrations when it was used. There are even reports that it was considered a status symbol to add more lead acetate to produce sweeter wines and other foods. While it might have been tasty, this really is a sure recipe for lead poisoning. Lead poisoning can develop after one exposure or it can develop after repeated exposures. The dose, and in this case the form, still matter. But it's unlikely that anyone could consume these kind of quantities of lead acetate, organic lead, and not have adverse health effects. Would it be enough to cause the kind of problems that would lead to the collapse of an empire? We'll probably never know.